Okay, the title of our lesson today for September the 20th is The Message. Uh, our objective is we want to glimpse the fact that God is fully aware of our actions and to appreciate that even in judgment, God is merciful and to accept God's judgment and learn from it. Our key verse today says, And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and I will give them a heart of flesh. Ezekiel 11 and 19. And let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for an opportunity to study your word, and may we be lifted up by the content. Help us, Lord, to hear what you are saying to us. Receive it, Lord, and to use it for the upbuilding of thy kingdom. And let us, as we go forth this morning, Lord, be mindful of those that are less fortunate than we. We pray for them in the hospital, Lord, you know their needs. Um, we pray for our country, Lord, in the sad situation that is in. We pray, Lord, for leaders to be led in the direction you would have them to go. Give them the wisdom and the knowledge that they stand in need of uh, to lead us, Lord, uh, as you would have them to. Be with all of our ministers and pastors, Lord, throughout the land that are proclaiming your word. May they proclaim it, Lord, uh, with the boldness that you, only you, Lord, can give them. And help us, Lord, as a people to receive it and turn from our wicked ways and glorify your name. Um, be with us through this lesson. Give us the words, Lord, that, that only you can give us that will speak the things, Lord, that would be edifying to thy kingdom. Forgive us, Lord, where we fail you. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, and for our sakes we do humbly pray. Uh, Ezekiel again today, as he begins the lesson, um, he is in the vision or seeing the vision again, and this time a little bit on um, the different side. According to Ezekiel 10 and 19, the glory, um, glorious manifestation of God had already moved to the east gate. Now the east gate, remember, that's looking um, out. This was the main entrance to the to the temple, and Ezekiel saw there twenty five men, and only two of them are called by name, and that's Jezania and Palatia. The two named were evidently well known and men of power and influence. Now God said these men had failed in their responsibilities as leaders. Uh, rather than giving sound counsel to the people and encouraging obedience to God and to his prophets, they devised iniquity and gave evil advice. Um, in the book of Jeremiah, the exiles were instructed to build houses and plant gardens in the land of captivity, indicating a lengthy captivity. Uh, these princes contradicted the clear message of God's prophets and deceived the people with a false hope of deliverance. Now I want you to understand the scripture teaches us that we can believe the lie and be damned. Therefore, it's my responsibility to know what the scripture says. I don't just listen to someone else to lead me down uh, a wrong path. I... Uh, I'm instructed to read God's word and to know for myself what he has said. But their words seem to have been a reflection of their arrogance, um, their defiance of God's predicted judgment. Foolishly, they reasoned that God would never allow the city of his sanctuary uh, to fall to heathen. But God had shown Ezekiel the evil of these princes and commanded him to uh, prophesy against them. And uh, some of the some of the prophets were given words for Israel as a whole, but Ezekiel was given a prophecy to a particular man, to individuals, and he literally would speak to them. So um, the spirit of the Lord fell upon him and commanded him to speak out. So he he pointed out and named them. Um, then they, um, there was a, a a reckoning. In other words, uh, when God says, I'm going to, 
uh, get ready. He's going to. We don't we don't always understand God's timing, um, but there comes a time when um, judgment uh, falls. But God told Ezekiel to tell the princes of the people that he knew their thoughts and their intentions, and that he also let them know he would not take it lightly. Uh, by their contempt for God's truth and their lying counsel, they had greatly aggravated um, and, and their guilt basically increased the suffering of the people. They, this, this was, it caused a lot of heartache, a lot of uh, trials, and a lot of personal lives. Uh, because of their actions. The only people that would be safe from the Chaldeans basically would be those that were already dead. And uh, Jerusalem was going to suffer. And they would, they, basically it provided no safety for the living. Um, by their wicked devices, they hoped to avoid the judgment of God. But God vowed to bring upon them the sword that they literally feared. Uh, the city which they boasted would save them basically is about to fall before their very eyes. And they're going to be delivered into the hands of foreigners uh, who would be the agents of God's judgment. And God used these other, these other uh, kingdoms or powers literally to carry out his judgment. And not that they would be, again, justified uh, by doing so, but God used them. And they too would will fall at a time when God sees fit for it to happen. Now these were hard lessons. Not only would Jerusalem fail to be a haven of refuge, but there would also be no safety found anywhere. Um, by the sword of the Chaldeans, they were uh, they were to come to a the sovereign deity of Jehovah. God was speaking. And they were going to know it. God's judgment would fall upon them because they failed to keep his laws. And instead they adopted their own practices and customs uh, of the heathen people, neighbors that were around them. And so through judgment, um, they would know that God is the Lord and that he is in control. We too uh, need to understand this. And uh, in, in so doing, you know, um, God brings about and helps us to know the truth. And he did this through, uh, through the death of one of these leaders. Palatius' death signaled the beginning of judgment against the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem. And, and all Ezekiel had predicted was soon to come to pass. The people needed to understand that. But he gave them a message of hope. God will be with them. Uh, even though we go through trials and tribulations, uh, God has said he would not leave us nor forsake us if we're trusting in him. The message of hope begins in Ezekiel 14 through 16, and God is uh, telling them he will be with them, and, and that's what he is assuring Ezekiel, because he is, Ezekiel is c concerned about the people, his people. And so he prays for the people in the Lord uh, with words of comfort as well as words of judgment. He, he uh, lets Ezekiel know, and he told Ezekiel that his true brethren, his true kinsmen, were, those, were not those in Jerusalem, but those of the exile. In other words, God had already moved his people out. Uh, Ezekiel was like a kinsman redeemer, was the nearest relative whose duty it was to redeem a threatened inheritance. Um, so Ezekiel was to intercede as a kinsman redeemer for those of the captivity, those over there. The people yet in Jerusalem were proud and self-righteous, um, and they presumed that their presence in the holy city indicated that they were righteous and those in the exile were those were those because God had rejected them, uh, which was quite, quite the controversy. God had already removed his people. He had not forsaken his people. He had he himself had been the, the sanctuary of those of whom he had scattered. Remember, Daniel was one of those and the three Hebrew children, as well as Ezekiel. 
but God was going to reunite them, and he assures Ezekiel of this. Those who return to their homeland will be a converted people. They will put away idolatry and all the detestable things that go with it. This is the evidence of a changed heart, and this is true in a Christian today. Uh, God does this renewing. But God will revive the willing, them that are willing to listen to him. More than a mere uh, national regathering and religious reform are promised. And this is to when he begins to um, talk about uh, or, or speak to individuals and not just a nation. Uh, God promises to regenerate the hearts of his people. Uh, the bitter divisiveness will, will not be there anymore. And the people will be of one heart because God puts a new spirit in the penitent. And I think we can recognize those today in, in people that have, have accepted Christ as their Savior. Israel's immediate future was indeed dark at this point in time, but the long-term future was rich in hope uh, in the Lord. Uh, the Lord would convert them from idolatry and give them a new spirit and a new heart and make the people to be of one heart. Uh, yet these promises were not without a condition. Uh, same today. Not everyone will receive these blessings. Uh, they are only for those who forsake their sins, those who continue to love. Idolatry with all of its detestable practices will be excluded from the promises and the blessings of God. Let me read the little uh, uh, application illustration. It says, It is very clear from these verses that salvation is a personal matter. Relationship to God is individual and moral, not a matter of racial or national ties, as many in Israel had falsely believed at that particular time. He will transform those who turn from their sins in the fear of the Lord. The spiritual miracle promised here is greater than the promised restoration of the people to their land. Um, I want to give you a little uh, illustration here. It says, how much damage can a rock do? Uh, even a small pebble can crack a window or create an injury and put an eye out. Uh, not only does the rock hurt others when hurled, but it also hurts itself, chipping away layer by layer. This is exactly how heart of stone works, hurting others with selfishness, pride, falsehood, and slowly damaging itself. Uh, but God promised a regenerate heart, a tender heart, to those who trust in him. How does a tender heart impact others? People look to that tender heart. So God gives them a message. And um, and then this was where the sadness uh, really became. The glory of God literally departs. The departure of the glory of God's presence was a great tragedy for Israel. Without God's presence, the temple became just another building. And Jerusalem, just another city. When the glory departed, it was a signal that the time had come for judgment to fall upon the temple and the city of Jerusalem. Now the glorious presence of the Lord stood on the Mount of Olives to bring judgment upon the city, but also as a tender reminder of God's mercies. Um, Ezekiel declared his fellow exiles all the Lord had revealed to him. And he, he expressed that. That is the ministry of a prophet. Uh, he could not l live in a state of ecstasy or, you know, he couldn't, imagination, he could not, delighting in the glory to come. Uh, as a spokesman for the Lord, he could not choose what parts of a message that he wanted to preach or what parts to omit. Uh, he had to reveal it all. And he gave three truths. First, that the exile itself was a long-term reality. In other words, you're here for the long haul. Uh, it would not soon end. In fact, I think they were there for a period of 70 years, according to the scripture. 
And then second, Jerusalem must yet suffer greatly. Jerusalem was going to be destroyed and literally done away with. The city would perish and the temple with it, and it did. Uh, multitudes would die or be carried into exile. And then third, there would be a future day. And this is what we, you and I, look to today. Future day of restoration, regeneration for the rem remnant of the exiles that repented. A people with new hearts uh, would be restored to their land. Uh, the themes of Ezekiel's message were sin, judgment, and then salvation. And you know, Jesus himself came and brought about this when he literally came back. So if we look at this application here, how are we to understand the promises made to Israel in this chapter? Now, although there was a restoration at the end of the Babylonian captivity, there was a little sign of the spiritual renewal promised here. Now, and that, that spiritual renewal, of course, come through Jesus Christ. The people returned to their homeland, but it was not theirs. It did not belong to Israel again at that time, nor has it to this time up until in the 1940s. They were carried back to their homeland. Uh, but it was but a part of the great Persian Empire at this particular time. With the coming of Christ, there were many who repented and received uh, the new hearts that was predicted there by Ezekiel. God now has a new Israel made up of individuals who have received new hearts. There are many Jews in the land that have accepted Christ as their Savior. Many of them did there as Christ walked here on this earth. What has been started in this age will be full and complete in the world to come. Now, Jesus spent three and one half years among the people of Israel seeking fruits of repentance. He was rejected, and he rejected those who refused him. One cannot fail to notice that it was from that same Mount of Olives that Jesus pro proclaimed uh, a second destruction against Jerusalem and the temple. Now is the time of God's long suffering as he proclaims the final judgment, the one that all previous judgment points to, and that's, um, that's Jesus Christ. Jesus came, uh, made it possible for us to accept him as our personal Savior, and if we can believe in our heart and trust in him, turning our lives over to him, then he will see us through. This is this new heart, this new generation. He said he would give us a new heart, a new thought, a new uh, outlook, a new concern for, for uh, ourselves and our fellow man. But it's up to us as individuals. We must accept him as our Savior. Uh, I think we're going to have, like, if I'm understanding Jeff, one more lesson uh, online. And then uh, after that, we're going to, we'll be moving back to the church. Um, and if I understand it correctly, we'll all be together. Like, all adults will be in the sanctuary and all our youth will be in the fellowship halls. That's so that we can experience experience the ventilation that we need to to hopefully keep us all safe so everyone be praying about this we'll do one more lesson online and then we'll be back at church um, have a good week